Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about firewalls, IDS, intrusion detection systems, and IPS, intrusion prevention systems. So I'll tell you about the characteristics of each, the differences between them, and how they best work together to provide security for an organization. So starting off with the IDS and the IPS. IDS stands for intrusion detection system, and IPS is an intrusion prevention system. The IDS or IPS uses signatures to inspect packets up to layer seven of the OSI stack, looking for traffic patterns which match known attacks. They can also use anomaly-based inspection to look for unusual behavior, such as a host which is sending a lot more traffic than usual, that would indicate that it has been infected by a worm. So your IDS and IPS they actually are quite similar to the antivirus software that you'll find on your PC and that they use signatures to look for known attacks. They can also use heuristics to look for characteristics which would indicate an attack. So something out of the normal or something which looks similar to another known attack. The IDS and IPS require skilled staff to tune them to their own particular environment and minimize false positives and false negatives. A false positive is when the IPS triggers because it thinks there's been an attack when actually that was legitimate traffic. And a false negative is worse. That is when there is an attack, but the IPS does not recognize it and does not trigger. So your IDS and your IPS, they do need tuning because each separate environment has got its own separate traffic patterns. So something that might be legitimate in your organization would maybe indicate an attack in a different organization. So it does take some time to tune the IPS when you first install it to tune out, to filter out those false positives and false negatives. And as things can change in your network over time, it requires the IPS to be updated to reflect that. The difference between an IDS and an IPS. So an IDS, an intrusion detection system, sits alongside the traffic flow and informs security administrators of any potential concerns, anything that looks like an attack. An IPS, an intrusion prevention system, sits in line with the traffic flow and it can also block attacks as well as notify you about them. Now, an IDS may also have the capability to tell a firewall to block attacks if the firewall is in line with the traffic flow, but the IDS is not. Obviously, you would need to have an IDS and a firewall which are compatible to be able to do that the Cisco IDS and firewall can do that. Okay, so here's a diagram showing the difference between the IPS and the IDS. And you can see we've got the IPS on the top here. It is in line with the traffic flow. The traffic flow is going through it. So if it detects an attack, it can stop, it can block that traffic. An IDS, on the other hand, is off to the side of the traffic flow. So here, we're going to be using mirroring to send a mirror copy of the traffic to the IDS because the traffic is actually going through a different path. We're just sending a copy to the IDS. The IDS itself cannot drop the traffic in line. So if there was a firewall here and it was a compatible firewall, the IDS could send a message to the firewall telling the firewall to do it. The reason that we have the two different options here is that an IPS can sometimes be a bottleneck. If there's not enough throughput on the IPS to handle the amount of traffic going through it, you don't want it to slow down the network traffic. You could use an IDS instead in that situation. There are other things we can do to help with that, such as clustering as well. I'll talk about clustering a little bit later on. Okay, so that was the IDS and the IPS, comparing them with firewalls now. 
So an IPS and IDS uses signatures to inspect packets up to layer 7 of the OSI stack, looking for traffic patterns which match known attacks. So IPS uses signatures. Firewalls block or permit traffic based on rules such as destination IP address and port number. So an IPS uses signatures, a firewall uses rules. Organizations will always deploy firewalls on their internet edge. There's no way an organization would connect to the internet without having a firewall there to protect themselves. They may also deploy firewalls at suitable security points inside their internal network. So for sure, they'll have a firewall between them and the internet. They might also have a part of their network which has got sensitive servers there. Maybe we'd have another separate firewall there also as well. IPSs are typically seen as an option. So where firewalls are mandatory, you're always going to have a firewall between you and the internet. IPSs are traditionally seen as optional rather than mandatory. They may de be deployed in conjunction with your firewalls. Now, the lines have blurred in recent years between IPS and firewalls. So the things that they do are separate, but you can now get all-in-one devices. So you get firewalls, which have also got IPS capability built into them as well. And that is becoming particularly prevalent since the emergence of next generation firewalls. So modern firewalls do also often have IPS capability as well as the firewall capability. They're also often capable of acting as the endpoint of VPN tunnels as well. I'll talk about VPN tunnels later in this section. So organizations have a choice. They can deploy an all-in-one solution with a firewall which also has IPS capability, or they might split out those functions to provide better scalability. Specialized devices to separate firewall and IPS may also have more advanced features than would be available with an all-in-one solution. Another option for scalability and higher throughput is clustered devices. So you saw in the diagram earlier, I had that inline IPS, and you saw that it's possible that it could become a bottleneck if it doesn't support enough throughput for the amount of traffic going through it. Well, a solution that will often resolve that issue is by putting in multiple hardware devices there and sending the traffic through those multiple hardware devices. If the devices support clustering, then they act as a single solution for management and also for all of their features as well. But because you've got multiple devices there, they now support higher throughput and it also gives you redundancy in case one of them fails as well. Okay. Let's wrap up this lecture with a look at an example network topology showing how firewalls and IPS can work together. So in the example network here, we've got a couple of departments on the inside, department A and department B. They're connected into a layer three switch, and then that's connected to the inside interface on the firewall. The outside interface on the firewall is connected out to the internet. We also have a DMZ here, that's a demilitarized zone where we're going to put our sensitive internal servers there. By having the servers in a DMZ rather than on the inside, that allows us to have a more suitable policy, separate policies for our servers and for our normal internal hosts. So you can see here we've also got an IPS as well, which is protecting those internal servers. Now, some things to say here. If this firewall was an all-in-one solution, next generation firewall, which also had IPS capabilities, such as the Cisco ASA with firepower, then we wouldn't need to have a separate IPS here. And that would also protect the inside hosts as well as the internal servers. Right now, if this firewall is just fulfilling the firewall duties, it doesn't have any IPS features on there. And we've got the IPS down here. Well, right now the IPS is just protecting our internal servers. We don't have an IPS protecting the internal host. Depending on your particular situation and environment, that might be acceptable. So you can see here, this is just an example of one way that you could do it. You're always going to have a firewall protecting yourself from the internet. An IPS is typically seen as optional. 
the IPS can be a separate device or it can be built into the firewall. Okay, that's everything that I needed to tell you here. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at how firewalls work in some more detail and also compare them to packet filters. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.